Apes.io got a massive beautiful update, and it seems they've even further proved optimization so I'm gonna have to go even bigger to try and hurt the game. Link in the description below. The first thing we're gonna need today are these things, while also remembering we need these things to continue our upgrade path. And luckily I can be pretty lazy to start, because all I have to do is add a white part to these. Oh that's cute, they give me a warning now. You have placed a lot of buildings, this is just a friendly reminder that the game cannot handle an endless count of buildings. I mean... It's not that many, but if things start to slow down, I will maybe remove a few. But I'm also going to do something really stupid and lazy right now and bring these all the way to the far side. And yes, I will be chaining things now. So these all stack. They're mining 4.8 items per second. A single one does 1.2 per second. And I'm simply now going to hijack some of this white. And then in a horribly ugly little interchange, smash it all together so it finally makes the shape we need. It's not the quickest process yet, but we're getting them started. And since the jam up is this piece itself, we just need a few more of those. We really only need 6,000 and that's not a ton. I very quickly doubled everything so we're producing them a little bit faster again. So obviously 3 stackers isn't enough, but we're also a little low on white paint. Luckily I know where to find more. We've just got to make it far enough to unlock those wires. And one more time I've expanded my operation so I now have 5 stackers at play. And just look at my productivity soar. Since I can be getting a little bit faster speeds, I'm going to try and upgrade some of this like mixing and painting. Set up a very small little blue square mining thing because I only need about 8,000 of those and I'm already halfway to my goal. It's amazing how fast time goes when you're trying to use your brain. And as you can see, I needed more blue, which I managed. Simply by stacking up 5 items per second with about 4 items per second, so 9 items per second going down the conveyor. And we're already mining these, and we need to mine basic circles for extra conveyor speed. I figured for a quick way to mine circles, I would just stack a whole bunch of these together and feed them in right here. Just doing that is giving me 40 per second. Uh, yeah, we already blew through the thing, and I just set that up. Hopefully this wasn't anything too important. Important. I don't really remember what it was. And there's level 16, which unlocks as a very handy part. Cut things into four parts instead of two. Which is going to come in handy because I now need 20,000 of whatever these things are. I should also be placing more belt readers everywhere. Now we can actually see how many things are getting carried along. I'm also now going through the very painstaking process of making these things. And I'm glad I waited till now to get the four-way cutter because that's making this a lot easier. Because it's actually fairly painless to make this. Cut that into four shapes color it into two different things and put them all back together. Now I just need to remember where I left my green these things. And all I've got to do is combine these two together, the things on the right go on top, and I finally have the shapes I need for one of the upgrade. I just need like a billion of them. It's nice they have a Christmas theme. Now, let's aim for level 17. We need to make these. Luckily we have the base shape already formed. Do you think they have to be rotated the same way? And luckily by simply using this four piece cutter now, I can make the entire fan shape with one cutter. And the slowest part in this whole process is producing the blue fans. Luckily we can copy paste the important parts. Well it's definitely faster than it was but it still takes a long time to smash all these pieces back together. Since I'm waiting for many many other shapes I've decided to also do these which are going to lead to an upgrade. Mostly I have all of the parts already available it's just a matter of feeding them all the way down here. And interestingly enough we're producing the bottom to put back on top again. And there we have the finished product. Now that I got the purple fence set up I realize how long it's going to take to hit this one. A new upgrade is available. Your five conveyor belts go from times four to times six so that's a pretty big increase 50 percent and i've been staring at these conveyor belts for so long i can actually see the difference and look at all the numbers they all jumped up pretty big now that they're carrying it along better i've got a little plan but it's going to involve a lot of copy and pasting because to do anything big it's going to cost like at least five thousand of those things and i currently only have ten thousand i've tracked on a source it points the right way so if we build way out here in the middle of nowhere we'll have lots of space to build mega factories so then once i have this process established I can easily replicate it and these basically produce the currency I need to copy paste. So being way out here, even if it's a simple process, we can add 10 of these in very easily. And that really simplifies the process because I only need one shape feeder, one color feeder to replicate this. So if I simply copy paste it and put another one somewhere over here, I can very easily feed it. And of course that works on basically all sides. So after copy pasting my designs a few times to increase production, we're up to 8.6 per second. So if I let this run for a few hours, we'll build up so much currency, I'll be able to copy paste everything. And then once I do it's just a matter of feeding it the right shapes and that's really easy to do. It's approximately eight hours later and I've farmed up over 200,000 currency pieces. Plus we upgrade our painting and our level so now we have a double painter. Skipping ahead just a little bit and we've unlocked an entirely new layer 
called wires. This comes with all sorts of new, complicated, and amusing toys. Basically, you can make things do whatever you want with enough ingenuity. But its application here is you can make buildings talk to each other to make things more efficient or smarter. And full disclosure, I did not build whatever this is, I'm just admiring it right now. My brilliant application of wires so far is coloring a square two different colors at once using a quad painter. And this is done through the wires layer. I've got this switch activating all four of the quadrants for the square. If I hit that, it stops letting things through. And then we also have things like filters. At its most basic, there's a switch that either lets things through, or if you want it to filter out, it's going to filter out everything. Which again is done through that invisible layer of wires. To make it a little more complicated, I can hook it up to a signal like this, which simply says blank circle. And then if I bring some circles onto that same conveyor, it's going to actually filter it out. Correction, it will do that if I make it a colorless circle. I had that set to white for some reason, so there we go. It's now uh, filtering out, so there we go. It's now filtering out anything but the blank circle. So those will continue on to whatever I want them for. Everything else will get filtered out to whatever I want them for. And then there's some other things that I'm not really smart enough to use. These are an insulator so you can make wires cross each other and stuff, but I don't really need to do that because the more complicated this gets, the worse it's gonna be. And that's about as complicated as I can make it so far because I'm stupid. And now in true stupid person fashion, let's go big with something. Let's see how many pieces we can put into here at once. Maybe the game will break. Everything is very leveled up right now, so you can see it's at eight or seven times speed. This seems as far as we can zoom out, so the most we could possibly fit in one screen is about here. I'm just gonna outline the corners. Because I kind of want to fill this entire thing with shapes, all flowing into the hub eventually, but I want to see how the game likes. And I think the best way to do that is gonna be red circles. I'm currently limited to 14 items per second, but that's plenty. I can also make more of these things. I've seen a few ideas of people doing something similar to this. You can actually use the storages as overflows. Basically, things leave the left side until they're jammed up, then it backs up into the storage and it starts to release the right side as far as that can go. And then the storages will just start filling up if nothing can go. Don't worry, I'm just as confused as you are so far, but this will work eventually. Already I see a flaw with my design, mostly where the tunnels have to spit out. I'm gonna need a bit of extra space. Unless I can manage to work around. I mean, it's not the prettiest, but it actually works. So just like that, we have six different colorers all working together to produce red circles. And the best part is, these are all fed by a single track on all sides. That's super easy to copy paste. Anyways, let's do our best right now to start hurting the game. Then we'll figure out what's next. Basically for now, I'm just gonna go up and down and work my way in. I am thinking about what to do next, but for now I'm enjoying this part somehow. I won't lie, that's kind of hypnotic. In theory, these could be faster if they were storages instead, but the conveyor I think is at capacity anyway, so it's not going to make a difference. I can only move so many along these conveyors at a time. But let's bring another color and another shape into the fold. How about green squares? It's very, very easy to set this up at this point. And then we just introduce it into our circle land. It's basically one for one now, so that makes the game think a little bit extra harder and we get something different to look at. So while we're at it, let's do the same thing with stars. We'll make them blue. Again, it's painfully easy to do now, so we're just going to feed it in. Now we get this fun alternating pattern. Anyways, let's finish feeding it towards the hub to see how the game looks it. This part is pretty easy in itself too. I thought I'd have to spend more time making track. So far I'm not feeling any slowdown, but they did say they increased the optimization and made everything a little bit better. Think I'm feeling it start to have a little bit of a struggle. And that's weird, I couldn't imagine why. And there we go, I've got whatever this is finished. Kind of strange how there's a little gap in the shapes over there, but Yep, this is what we did. If I move around, the game doesn't like it very much, but there's a lot of shapes moving around. Is this it? Did I win the game? I always feel like I've done something good to a game when it won't let me take a screenshot anymore because it's thinking too hard. What do you think would happen if we copy pasted this? That wouldn't work, of course, because the exit is in the middle. We can copy paste sections. This is going to make it alarmingly easier to just make this thing bigger and bigger and bigger. Now it's going to have to go through all of these first. All right, I feel like the game is struggling a little bit harder now that it's got extra shapes to deal with, so we'll keep going until it breaks. In a case, you're wondering we're delivering 15 of each of the basic shapes per second. This feels weird like I'm actually losing track of if I'm moving or not by watching this. It's definitely slowing down though you can see the slower pace of the conveyors at this point. I've also just realized that we have three colors already. If we had a fourth color we could start quad coloring things too. Now we're getting somewhere the conveyors are getting slower and slower and I've got an idea of how we can make the game think just a little bit more even. I can definitely feel it now especially once the shape started going into the hub. The game is definitely gonna love quad paint at this point. The first so we're gonna need some purple. Then we bring in the red and the blue and just need some green. And you know what? We're gonna use whatever shape this is. And just like that, it's all hooked up, but it won't do anything until I give it the power and the allowance. And what we need to do since we want all four colors is hook them all up and then just hook them to a switch. And that's easy enough to do. And then the switch 
goes through on this layer and then we touch it and it gives us our rainbow shape. So let's have them join the fun somewhere along the way. That adds some more color. Not that we need it anymore. All right, while we're at it, let's just add another one of these to hopefully slow the game down a little bit more. I was supposed to click the other button. And there we go. I painstakingly attached all the colors one more time to an entire another quad painter. So again, it's just a matter of actually wiring it and done. I thought that adding this would kind of slow the game down but it didn't really seem to have made an impact so maybe you need to add like a lot of buildings for it to really do it. My builds are so long though that we're still just getting through the red and green stuff now. I wonder how many shapes that is. It's got to be a lot because even zoomed all the way out it's that big. Well shapes.io I guess we'll call it a draw.